need much more mass if we're going to go to Mars. So if nothing else, just the launch vehicles alone are the key thing that we're going to have in the near term that will enable us to go to Mars. In the Apollo days, a single chemical rocket, the Saturn V, carried the entire mission, the crew capsule, the moon lander, and ascent vehicle all in one load. Mars requires bigger Earth launchers and more of them. You've got to have a way of throwing big, heavy payloads up into orbit uh, from, from Earth. Our biggest payloads go up with space shuttle in there, you know, 20 metric tons, something like that. You need something on the order of 80 to 100 metric ton capability to orbit. The amount of stuff you need to go and come back to Mars is heavier than the International Space Station. We have yet to move anything that big ever in space. The analogy is going from a rowboat to an aircraft carrier. To visualize the mass of the space station, picture 40 transit buses lashed together floating in space. The approximate weight, 450 tons. To get that much material into space, NASA is developing two specialized launchers. Ares-1 carries the crew into orbit. The real workhorse is Ares-5. It's the space equivalent of an 18-wheeler, one that can generate an earth-shaking 9.6 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, enough to launch 175 Boeing 747s off the runway. Within minutes of liftoff, the Ares-5 accelerates to 11 kilometers a second when it breaks free of Earth's gravity. It's the big commitment from the U.S. in getting to Mars. If Ares doesn't work well, then we, we're just not going to Mars. In the Cameron mission, the components for three Mars spacecraft, a crew vehicle, and two cargo containers would be carried from Earth to orbit on multiple launches. Once assembled in space, the unmanned cargo vehicles will be sent to Mars. The crew vehicle follows two years later. The idea is to deploy as much mass out to Mars ahead of time as you can so that your, your humans can go out there really quickly. You don't want to take any more mass than you have to on that human transfer mission. Faster means the crew spends less time exposed to the hazards of deep space. Mass is the crew's enemy. In the case of Mars, a lot of that mass will be the fuel to get you there, the consumables to keep you alive. James Cameron has a controversial plan to reduce mass. Cameron intends to take only enough fuel to fly one way. The fuel for the return trip will be manufactured on Mars. A bold idea. Too risky for most mission designers. It's never been tried before. But Cameron is convinced Mars has the raw materials to make it work. But what do you know you have there? Well, plenty of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has got oxygen in it, and it's got carbon in it. Carbon is the basis of your rocket fuel, and oxygen is the basis of the way you burn the carbon in the rocket fuel. Well, that's your, that's your ticket home. That's your fuel to come back. Cameron is more cautious with other parts of the mission. Unlike other planners, he proposes that the landing vehicle travel with the crew. Sending it to Mars in advance is inviting trouble. Eagle is undocked. You're going to get into your landing craft, which no, no human being has touched for a couple of years now, has been sitting out there, uh, you know, freezing in, in orbit. And you're going to fire that puppy up, and then you're going to try to land on Mars. That strikes me as, as fraught with risk, as opposed to a spacecraft that you can keep online and healthy while you're transiting out there. Cameron's lander concept is built around the rover the vehicle for exploring the Martian surface. The rover will be critical for locating the Mars habitat and supplies already sitting out there on the surface. The second you say that you're gonna put stuff on Mars ahead of time, you have no choice but to land near that stuff. If you don't land near that stuff, you're not coming home. If you're 200 miles off course and you have no vehicle with you that can travel 200 miles over the surface of Mars, you're gonna die. There is no limit <laughs> to the number of places where danger, deadly danger, could actually transpire. In spite of the risks, space agencies around the world are taking on the challenge of designing the spaceships for a manned mission to Mars. The results are surprising. Russia's version of the vehicle that will take the crew on the first step of the journey has wings, while the US goes back to a capsule design. Two radically different approaches as former enemies 
get set to rekindle an old rivalry. The Russians cherish their glory days in space exploration. Sputnik, the first satellite. Yuri Gagarin, the first human to orbit Earth. Past these gates where few Westerners have been is Energia, the aerospace company behind many of Russia's success stories. During the moon race, it built Soyuz, which still carries crew members from Earth to the International Space Station. Soyuz has been an amazingly resilient vehicle. It's really worked on the philosophy, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That all said, you can't get beyond Earth orbit. And if the Russians want to be a serious player with the rest of the international space community in going beyond low Earth orbit, going to the moon, going to Mars, and they want to have a significant contribution, they've got to go beyond Soyuz. Soyuz is now four decades old. It seats only three and cannot be reused. If Russia wants to take on Mars, it has to come up with a bigger, more versatile crew carrier for its cosmonauts. This is the future. The Russians call it Clipper, a six-passenger space vehicle. Clipper will shuttle cosmonauts into orbit and dock with the spacecraft that takes them to Mars. For all its sophistication, Clipper relies on the same simple aviation principles that guided the Wright brothers. Clipper has basic flight characteristics. It's just like a glider. Because it has wings, the landing will be similar to that of an ultralight. His own flying experience convinced Clipper designer Sergei Stonko that wings are the surest way of bringing the spacecraft back safely. Clipper will pick up cosmonauts returning from Mars and then, like the US Space Shuttle, glide home through Earth's atmosphere to a predetermined landing site. Right now, Clipper is designed to carry crew members to and from orbit. But we are optimistic about adapting some of its technology to a spacecraft that will one day go to Mars. Over the next few years, the look of this full-scale Clipper mock-up may change. Energia is hoping to lure investment from Europe to finance continuing development. The goal? is to have it ready for a first mission in 2014. If all goes well, Clipper will get the big job of ferrying cosmonauts from Earth on the first stage of a trip to Mars. We have taken the best elements from Soyuz and incorporated them in Clipper. Reliability and redundancy of key mission functions, which will allow Clipper to stay in flight despite minor equipment failures. And that's not all. Energia is already training crews for the first Mars mission. A simulator prepares them for the delicate dance required to dock with the International Space Station. Those space station visits will serve as rehearsals for the day Clipper carries cosmonauts to a spacecraft headed for Mars. In the United States, NASA is taking a different road to the same destination. <laughs> 